Hi guys, so I am going to upload this video to my YouTube channel as well at Simply Nicole. And basically last week on my channel, I filmed a video and I really don't remember what the point I was trying to get across. I mean, I came across some, I was watching a new show basically. I was watching a new show that I found on like Showtime, I think. And it was called Couples Therapy. And I was just really intrigued by the show and listening to all the different couples and the issues they were having. And a lot of different behavioral traits came up like passive aggressive behavior, gaslighting, narcissism, childhood trauma. And it just led me to make a YouTube video for my channel. And I kind of was talking about um, other stories that I've heard, personal, I don't want to say personal experiences, but just potential personal experiences. Um, and it ended up just being a complete rant. I ended up ranting. But then I posted a clip of it to my TikTok. And before I did that though, I kind of realized like, I feel like when I was ranting, a lot of stuff I was saying was kind of contradicting each other. Cause I was talking about how when you're in relationships, there are patterns with the person that you're dealing with. There, there are patterns, like people have patterns, we behave in patterns. And when there is, when the pattern is broken or when something is off, the person has changed their behavior, that means something has changed, something has shifted. And I was talking about how if you need to notice and trust in yourself, when the pattern has changed, you need to trust in yourself that something has shifted. And you don't always have to necessarily go to that person to get that validation that something has shifted. To, to try to convince yourself and make yourself think you're not crazy. You need to trust that, no, something is off. But when you try to seek that validation, that's because you think that something is off because of you. It's not It's not your fault. It's not something that you did. It's this person that you're dealing with that you probably haven't vetted, that you probably don't know well enough. And that could be like an anxiety response because it's not safe for you to be in relationships and dynamics with people that you don't know. You're sharing space with them, sharing time with them, your feelings, your energy with them. You don't know them. It's not safe for you. Um especially when you're you're someone that shows up very authentically in relationships initially first meeting someone you're authentic you're true to who you are you're genuine but i've learned and i've seen that you know a lot of people that that you may meet they're not always going to show up that way they don't have a good heart like you they're not authentic like you they're not confident in themselves and they may be more they're not being true to themselves they are performing they are showing a representative, they're acting, they're being phony, they're being fake, they're not being truly themselves. So, but I realized like in my video, I kind of went against myself because I was like, you know, don't always bring up something when a pattern changes. But then I said, don't be passive aggressive. So I found an article on passive aggressiveness and I got to share it with y'all because I was shocked. But the person on my TikTok commented, um, so two people commented, one person said, this guy said that um, he told someone that their pattern changed and they immediately gaslighted him like he's tripping. So yes, that can happen. And then another person commented said, Bring it, bringing it up may potentially create the possibility of being gaslit as well. And yes, that really like stuck with me. Like, remember when you, there are consequences to everything that you do though. And when you, I put in my caption on my, on the reel that I posted, I said, think before you speak. Because when you do decide to address a conflict or address a pattern that has changed, which this will occur, this this occurs in all types of dynamics, because as humans, we're so versatile, we fluctuate, it's up and down, volatile, I meant, we fluctuate, it's up and down. When you bring something up, though, be intentional with that, understand Think before you actually bring it up. Understand what could the consequences be? Is this someone that I trust? Is this someone that I really know? Because if you haven't vetted them and then they give you a reaction where they make you feel like you're crazy or they gaslight you, gaslight you like, like this comment is saying, then now, now everything is just a disaster. <laughs> everything is a disaster. Now you're in confusion. So let me read this article. So this is from Very Well Mind. Very Well Mind. How to recognize passive aggressive behavior. And this is something that can show up in relationships 
and it can show up in the workplace too. So this can apply. So here we go. So passive aggressive behavior is defined as behavior that is seemingly, I don't even know how to pronounce that word, unacocious, sorry, accidental or neutral, but that indirectly displays an unconscious aggressive motive. Okay, so people who are passive aggressive are indirectly aggressive rather than being directly aggressive. For instance, passive aggressive behavior can appear in the form of resistance to another person's request by procrastinating. How many times have we seen that? Expressing sullenness or acting stubbornly. I just felt like when I was reading this, there were so many things that I've seen in relationships with different people, friends, you know, whatever it is. I'm like, not even myself, but just that I'm seeing and I'm like, this is passive aggressiveness. This should be addressed. So signs of passive aggressive behavior. Passive aggressive behavior can show up in many forms and it gives bullet points. And the first one says, if someone is being passive aggressive, they might, number one, ghost you or seemingly disappear. Ghost you or seemingly disappear. How many times have we heard the story of women being ghosted by guys that they're talking to? All the time I hear it, I see it on the internet, on TikTok, you know, and I can say it's happened to me before, but I never thought of it as being passive aggressive. But anybody that I, that will ghost you or something like that, try to ghost you or gaslight you, it's like, it's, it's, they probably need to heal. They probably need to heal. But ghosting you or seemingly disappear. And I saw a, a, um, a, a YouTube short for one of my favorite life coaches today. And she was talking about ghosting. And she said, the part that she ended with is what I really remember. She said that, um, if someone goes to you, like if a guy goes to a girl, it will be in the girl's nature to try and fix it and try and figure out why did they ghost me? And that's in our nature. And I know that's happened to me before. And I was hard on myself about that. Saying, well, you don't need to ask this person why they ghosted you. If they want to leave, let them. If they don't want to be in your life, let them go. But that I said, don't be so hard on yourself. Like when I saw that video, I said, I'm not going to be hard on myself. Maybe that was my nature. Maybe that was my emotions. Maybe because I'm so in tune with my emotions, it was me trying to keep myself safe. But the root of that was that I was like, like not with this person, but with this person and don't know them. Because, and I, and I think all this comes down to is moving too fast. I think we can move way too fast when we're just, we know what we don't know. But it's all about learning. You're going to learn. It's okay to make mistakes and learn. Just make sure that when you learn, you really get the lesson and you apply it for the future. That's, that's all that I ask. That's all that, that's a promise that I'm making to myself moving forward and I hope you can do the same. So first example, ghost you or seemingly disappear. When have we ever thought of that as being passive aggressive? Giving you a backhanded compliment. Giving you the silent treatment. Indirectly refuse your requests. Not tell you no, but also not do what you've asked. How many of us can say that they've had that happen to them? Oh, this is so triggering. Uh, uh, okay. Make excuses rather than say what is on their mind. Procrastinate when you ask them to do something. Response to your requests with sarcasm or subtle digs. Here we go. A passive aggressive person might repeatedly claim that they are not mad or that they are fine. Even when they are apparently furious and obviously not okay. In denying what they are feeling and refusing to be emotionally open, they shut down further communication and refuse to discuss the issue. There's so many things that just popped up in my mind. There's so many things that just popped up in my mind. Shut down further communication and refuse to discuss the issue. And in the show that I was talking about, there was a husband and a wife. And basically, the husband was expressing passive aggressive behavior towards his wife. Because she would do little things to him throughout the week that just got on his nerves and bothered him and just like bothered him, irritated him. And instead, he never addressed it or brought it up or asked her to stop, he would kind of just shut down. 
Um, okay. So I'm going to go into some examples of passive aggressive behavior and then we'll wrap this up. So passive aggressive behavior can manifest itself in a number of different ways. And the goal with this is, guys, the goal is you really want to try not to be so passive. You don't want to be passive aggressive. You want to be able to make sure that you're with someone or giving your time to someone who, you know, is also emotionally intelligent and gives you the space to express your emotions and, and you give them the space to express their emotions. But I think issues that come into play when you're not intentional and when you are dealing with someone that you have not vetted. Because I think like naturally you're freaking out. Like I think you're freaking out when you're giving your time and energy, genuine time and energy to someone that you don't know if, they, if they're if they genuine. You don't know if they feel the same way. You're giving them the benefit of the doubt, but they haven't actually proven themselves. That is actually like very dangerous. So passive aggressive behavior can manifest itself in a number of ways. Um, we kind of already went over that one. This one was funny. Well, no, this one's good too. So you ask them to do something and they tell you they will, but they drag their feet, never wind up doing it or give you a sarcastic response. They pout, sigh loudly, or otherwise exhibit behaviors that are not happy, such as slamming cupboard doors, even though they don't express their unhappiness verbally. You know, we're going to keep going before I say that. And then... They complain about situations with other people that bother them as a means to indirectly say that they're unhappy when these same situations occur with you. They seem to keep score talking about how they do so many things for other people, yet they don't get the same treatment in return. So... So this is how passive aggressiveness can affect relationships. So the person who is, since the person who's being passive aggressive doesn't open up about how they are feeling, the underlying anger or frustration is never dealt with. The situation continues to fester as opposed to resolving the issues and moving forward. Okay, employees who are passive aggressive may face disciplinary action at work or be terminated. A student has already made it low. Da, da, da. Okay. So causes of passive aggressive behavior because you know for me i'm all about getting to the roots getting to the root of issues in the show again if there was all these all, all the couples whether it was the man the husband or the wife whatever like toxic trait that they were exhibiting whether it was like i talked about before passive aggressiveness gaslighting narcissism whatever it was it was always rooted back to something in their childhood and or something they experienced in the past and I've heard that that's where all these issues come from. It's just unhealed trauma. But actually seeing that unfold was just very, infast very fascinating. So family upbringing. Some researchers theorize that passive aggressive behavior can stem from being raised in an environment where the direct expression of emotions was discouraged or not allowed. As a result, people may feel that they cannot express their feelings more openly and instead find ways to passively channel their anger or frustration. And for some reason, I just really find this being the status quo. I just think this seems like the status quo. People not being okay expressing themselves for whatever reason, out of fear of being shut down, out of fear of being rejected, call it crazy a fear of being dismissed but i don't want you to operate like that i don't want you to be afraid to express yourself if you're in a relationship you are valuable you should be able to express yourself to someone that you're giving your time and your energy to you should feel comfortable with that but you have to be held accountable for that you have to really make sure you know this person before giving them your time and your energy okay Discomfort with confrontation. Being assertive and emotionally open is not always easy. When standing up for yourself is difficult or even scary, passive aggression might seem like an easier way, like I'm saying, an easier way to deal with your emotions without having to confront the source of your anger. And with passive aggressiveness as well, like I said, you may, you're, maybe you're afraid of, a, of getting a certain response. A certain response, maybe you're afraid of getting rejected, afraid of being dismissed. At the end of the day, if you've done your best, you think you've vetted this person, you know, and you really have an issue, 
um, and you want to bring it up and they dismiss you or reject you, remember that 90% of the way people treat you has to do with how they feel about themselves. So I kind of think, you know, if you're, if you are in a dynamic and you feel like you're not able to express yourself, you're being passive aggressive, you probably ended up attracting someone who is passive aggressive too. So 90, like I said, 90% of the way people treat you has to do with how they feel about themselves. If they feel that in their relationships and when they were growing up, they were able to express their emotions, then they will let you express your emotions. So it's about being equally yoked. So I feel like that was all I really wanted to say. Just bottom line, understand passive aggressiveness, recognize it when you're doing it, recognize it when someone else is doing it. When you're vetting people, you know, observing how they're acting in different situations, you don't always have to comment. Just take note, take note of things. Be very vigilant and make sure that you are, that you really have developed that relationship, the relationship with yourself, that you can trust yourself and you have someone, a source to go to, to help you when you're, when you're, when you're getting to know different people. Like I say, or like I've heard and like I've started to say, everything is spiritual. And when it comes to relationships and connections, I mean, we're all spiritual beings. Every, I mean, and, and spirits are strong and you are a very pure spirit and you should, you should protect yourself, protect your space and don't allow, you need to be cognizant of who you're letting into your space and who you are exchanging energy with. That's my best advice. So thank y'all for watching and see y'all later.